welcome to Old Bear Baptist Church. I invite them to grab the director of bulletin. And let's stand and sing the first song, the ones you hear in the bulletin. committees, 
These are the same committees every year. If you see a committee that interests you and you would like to serve on it, then what you do is contact one of the people on the nominating committee and say, pick me, pick me. Okay? There are three major ways that we serve in the church. And I am hoping that every member and every regular attendee has some way to serve in our church this year. This is not a clique. This is not a group that serves the church. Everybody needs to serve in one way or the other. So the first way is um, where you are teaching or preaching or doing a very intense leadership piece for the church. The second way is on a standard um, committee where you sometimes have to do something every week. Sometimes you might be on a committee that meets three times a year. But that is the second way. And the third way is that you do other tasks. And those other tasks have to do with things like um, uh, visiting uh, in homes. It might have to do with um, sending handcraft uh, cards or cards to our homebound folks. It might have to do with becoming a greeter. We know that Mr. Lee Cato is sort of coming towards retirement age, and so he's going to need some interns to help him uh, when he decides to give up being a greeter. Uh, so we need some people to, to work in that capacity. Uh, we have a lot of active members that we need to contact. Um, there are lots and lots of different ways that you would serve, besides being on a standard committee and besides being a, a teacher. So we want everybody to be involved. Find your place. If you don't hear anything that fits your need, give me a call. I will find a place for you, something that you can do to help all of us, because all of us need to serve Christ in this church. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. And the next hymn this morning, Nothing But the Blood, again with Sandy as we sing. <laughs> Today, 
uh, taking just a brief pause from Psalm 23 to shift our focus into the New Testament, John's Gospel, chapter 13, where we uh, find ourselves joining the account of Jesus and his disciples in the upper room as they were preparing to partake together of the cup of the Lord during the Last Supper. And so to help us prepare our hearts for the Lord's table that is prepared before us, I invite you to read with me. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version in John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. And now, before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, verse 2, the devil, having already put and to the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Jesus, knowing the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God, got up from supper and laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. And then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. And so he came to Simon Peter and he said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I do, you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew the one who was betraying him. And for this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. And so when he had washed their feet, taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If then the Lord and the teacher washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you also should do as I did to you. Truly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And as we take our two minutes to prepare our hearts today for, for the partaking of the Lord's Supper, as we uh, prepare in, in a way that we have um, made safe for us to do so this morning as, as we, in a sense, gather around this table today in just a few minutes. I want you to know it is the Lord Himself who invites us to this table. It is the Lord Himself who has prepared a place just for you at this table. And we do so this morning uh, bringing our needs before the Lord today. So let me share with you a couple of updates this morning as we prepare to enter into a prayer time together. Uh, first of all, a couple of praises this morning. Uh, a couple of praises that uh, the few tables were made full today. I'm so grateful uh, to Richard and Carolyn and to Rita and to Trill and Raquan. Uh, they gathered from Gaston uh, 20 boxes that were full and delivered those to, um, to a few folks within this community who were able to benefit from that. And so I, I thank you all so much for taking time to help uh, fill some tables this week in a very tangible way to, to do what, what the Lord Jesus has asked us to do by serving one another. So thank you so much um, for, for being instruments of the Lord in that manner this past Thursday. That, that will be happening 
uh, every Thursday over the next few weeks. So if you have any interest in, in helping that effort, please let us know. Uh, but thank you so much to those who did that. Also, a praise. Uh, Ms. Dessa has been on our prayer list for quite a while. She's having some, some much better days. So we thank the Lord for that. By way of prayer requests, a couple of special needs I want us to remember today. Uh, we continue praying for those who are impacted directly with uh, COVID-19. And so we uh, want to pray continuously for Barbara Miller in Florida who continues working through that diagnosis. Uh, Barbara has been caring for her parents in their home who have been under hospice care. Um, so this morning, Barbara let me know that her parents have been moved to in-care hospice for five days to give Barbara some uh, respite care as well. So those of you that have cared for parents, uh, you know that that respite care is so vital. So we continue to lift up Barbara and her parents this morning to the Lord. We, we also lift up uh, our president and those in government who are impacted with a COVID-19 diagnosis. Um, I want to ask you to also pray this week specifically on Tuesday uh, for Mr. David. Uh, Mr. David will be going in to have a port inserted uh, to help with some future treatments. And so, Mr. David, we will be praying for you on Tuesday of this week and in the coming days as you prepare to face some treatments. So we will be lifting you up to the Lord. And, um, and then as we pray this morning, Ms. Widow, it is so good to see you back with us. We are praying for you. We continue to extend, extend our comfort and our love to you. In Mr. Calvin's passing, we, um, we remember him so much, and we continue to lift you up to the Lord today. It's so good to have you back with us, too. Um, as we pray, if you have a need in your life, would you let that be known by the lifting of your hand this morning? And uh, I assure you today, the Lord is with you and knows what we have need of before we even ask. I've asked uh, Fred and Joe to play for us a uh, time of reflection and meditation. So I'd like to lead us in a prayer and then invite you to join me as we bow before the Lord for a time of meditation this morning before the message. So would you bow with me where you are as we pray today? Father, we are grateful for this day. Lord, we are, um, we, we are humbled to come into your presence. Lord, we acknowledge before you today we are not worthy, Lord, to be in your presence. And uh, we are grateful for Jesus Christ who mediates between you, a holy God, and us who have sinned against you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for paying the price of our sin and for making us worthy through the blood of Christ that has been shed for us. It is the blood of Christ and the body of the Lord that we remember today as we celebrate and observe World Communion Sunday in just a few moments together. And Lord, communion looks different now than it did eight months ago when we last celebrated in person. And Lord, for churches all over the world um, who would normally celebrate in a very personal way today, I imagine it looks different for them. But Father, what matters is you have invited us to have a seat at the table today. And Lord, we are grateful that you've invited us into your presence. And so Lord, today we, we come before you humbly and we thank you for being such a loving and gracious Lord. Father, we lift up today those who have very real needs in their life. Father, for those who continue to deal with the direct impacts of COVID-19, for Barbara and her parents, we lift them up to you. For our president, President Trump, and many others in government who have been directly impacted, we pray for their healing today. Father, we pray for the hundreds of thousands who have been impacted firsthand in our country and many, many more impacted across this world. Father, help us 
to turn to you for healing. Help us to seek your face for wisdom for an effective vaccine. Lord, today for other needs, we lift up Mr. David to you today as he um, has his work put in on Tuesday. Would you please lead and guide his doctors with wisdom? Uh, Lord, for others who are receiving treatments for Joe's brother Randy, we lift him up to you today. Lord, we uh, praise you for good things like those who had a full table this week from uh, the food that was distributed. We thank you for that. Lord, other needs on our prayer list uh, that we discussed and prayed for this past Wednesday, we bring these before you. Lord, for every hand that was raised, for every heart that is heavy, Lord, what a privilege it is to be in your presence. Knowing you're the God who can meet our needs, and we ask you to do that today as we spend a few minutes meditating together, and we ask this prayer as we bow together in Jesus' name.
betrayal, to go through a night of suffering in Gethsemane, facing uh, numerous trials that were underhanded, and of course getting ready to face the suffering of the cross. And yet, it is at this table in John 13 that Jesus takes the bread and the cup and he shares this with his disciples. Um, just over around 18 months ago, having an opportunity to visit just outside of the Jerusalem gates, a place just outside of Jerusalem known and uh, known and to, to be near where this upper room was and to be able to sit in that room with other believers who, who gathered there, believers who traveled from all over the world and thinking about what this night must have been uh, centuries ago and, and even though it was a very long time ago, a very real event that has implications for your life and for my life today. And I'd like for you to look at a few of those implications with me in John 13 verse 1. The scripture says, uh, that Jesus, knowing his hour had come. And I'm grateful today that as we gather around this table, symbolically speaking, we have a Savior who knows us today. And please don't miss that in verse 1. Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, can I remind you this morning, Jesus knows you. Can I remind you today, Jesus knows what we face this week. Jesus knows the hardships that you've gone through. Jesus understands the struggle. We have a Jesus who is very much in tune with His children at the table, understanding everything that you have gone through in your life and understanding everything you will go through in your life. I know on January 1st of this year, I was extremely excited about the things 2020 had in store, or so so I thought. And I remember thinking, um, January 1st, 2020, I remember thinking, ready for what this year has to bring. And boy, did we, did we ever have any idea what this year would bring. We, we have just under three months to go, y'all. We can make it to the end of the year. Amen? Uh, God, God already knew what we would face, just as we read in John 13, verse 1. Jesus knowing. He already knew what 2020 would hold. And He knows what the remaining days of this year hold for us. Can I encourage you today as we come to the table to find comfort in knowing that Jesus knows exactly what you are going through. He, he knows the depression. He knows the anxiety. He knows the worry. He knows the struggle. He knows the stress. He knows the fear. And on the other side of that, he knows the joys and the triumphs and the victories that only God Himself can give. Jesus knows. Think about these disciples for a moment. They gathered at the table with Jesus and they had been so close with Him over the prior months as they were with Jesus night and day as He ministered. And these disciples really had no clue what the next three days would hold for Jesus and for them. Their, their worlds were going to literally fall apart right beginning in this moment. And I'm so grateful today when, when our worlds fall apart and when chaos seems to ensue around us, none of this catches our Jesus by surprise. Amen? And He's with us at the table. He is with us through the chaos and uncertainty. And not for a moment does He ever leave or forsake us. I'm so glad what this scripture says to us in verse 1. Jesus knowing. He is an all-knowing God who knows us and knows about us. 
And you know, I think about the times that uh, as, as a young man, as I gathered, one of my favorite tables to sit at was the table of my grandmother and grandfather who lived in Irmo. And, and I remember so many meals gathering at their table. I was thinking this morning, as I had eggs and grits about my grandmother's grit, about my grandmother's eggs. I mean, she could make a perfect overnight egg, and, and her grits were always so good. And, and you knew it was a good morning when she pulled out a cantaloupe to put on the side of that plate. I loved sitting at her table. And I, I don't know how my grandparents knew it, but it was almost like they could read my mind and there were times that, uh, that I got a little bit of, in, into some trouble as a teenager, you know, nothing too crazy, but it's like they knew about it even before I had to say a word. I remember my grand grandmother looking over at me one day and said, you, you let that devil get into you, didn't you, son? Somehow, Grandma always knew. The Lord always knows. And as we gather at His table today, I'm so grateful the Lord knows us. Look with me just uh, next in verse 2. The Father having loved His own. I tell you today as we gather at this table and as we partake of this bread and this cup that is symbolic of the body and the blood of the Lord today, we partake at this table being able to celebrate wholeheartedly the love of the Father and the love of Jesus Christ that is, that is abounding to us and that is everlasting. And now more than ever, can I remind you that, that we, we and so many people need to understand what verse 2 says, that we have a Father who loves us. Amen? We have a Father who loves us with an everlasting, eternal love. We have a Father who a Father whose love never ends and never ceases. And no matter how far we may step away from the Father, even then He loves us immeasurably more. John, I'm so glad, points out in verse 2, the Father having loved His own. We have a Father who loves us tremendously today. And then look what they did in verse 2. Um, two more things I want to point before we partake of the Lord's Supper today. In verse 2 it says, during supper. Uh, supper is such a great meal that it, it is so good to sit down at the end of the work day and, and have a meal together. And if you still have children in your home, uh, psychologists tell us that the most important thing families can do with their children is to, no matter what else is happening, is to make sure you're taking time to gather at the table with your children for a meal. And that may look somewhat different. Uh, maybe it's a, even if it's a takeout meal or a fast food meal or even if it is a well-cooked meal and dishes are all over the place in the kitchen and there's much to do always, Take time to gather together at the table with your children. If you do nothing else during the day, gather with them at least once a day around the table for a meal together, thanking God for the food. Psychologists tell us that that was one of the most uh, well-rounded things that we can do for those who have children in the home. There's so much to be said about gathering around the table, and so during supper, verse 2, the scripture says, and the disciples gathered around, we get again in John's gospel, it is John, the beloved disciple, who leans against the chest of the Lord Jesus. There's a beautiful portrayal there that John gives us that the other gospel writers do not and there is a sense of intimacy as the, the disciples were gathered around the table. Uh, very likely they were reclining back. They were very likely seated on the floor or close to that. They were 
lead and recline back together with Jesus. And you know, we looked several weeks back, Psalm 23 tells us, the Lord prepares a table before us. And He has prepared a table before us today, both, both literally speaking, but spiritually speaking, the, the host, God Himself, has prepared a table. And the host wants to dine with you and with me today. Jesus says in Revelation 3, verse 20, if you're watching online today live or watching later, Jesus says in Revelation 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and I will dine with him and he with me. And I ask you today to hear the Lord's voice if there is ever a time we need to find a seat at this table. It is now. Amen. If there is ever a time we need to hear God's voice in our lives, it is now. If there is ever a time that we need to quiet our hearts and take a moment to sit in stillness and listen to what it is God is saying to us, it is now. I invite you today to find your seat at this table in which the Lord has prepared. There is a seat there just for you. There is a seat there just for you. And the psalmist says in Psalm 23, you prepare this for me. And this is something that has been well planned, well prepared for us. Now, I'm sorry to tell you today that we don't have fresh juice and fresh bread. I, I love communion when we can celebrate with fresh elements, but for precautions today, we have prepackaged communion cups that are disposable and that have been handled with cleanliness and with care. So I want you to feel comfortable today as you take your cup back to your pew, but, but be rest assured just as this table has been prepared for you, and thank you to those who prepared this for us today. Just as this table has been prepared, so the Scripture tells us in Psalm 23, the Lord has prepared a table for us. And that word table represents a banquet. It represents the King's table. We have a seat for us today at the table of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Psalm 23, verse 19 your goodness is so great, O oh Lord. Amen? Can you say that? Say amen. You have stored up great blessings for those who are you. You've done so much for those who come to you for protection. God has already prepared a table for you. Relating John 13 back to Psalm 23, Psalm 23 reminds us you have prepared a table before me. And in some senses today, can I remind you that you are the guest of honor at the Lord's table. Psalm 5 verse 11 says, you welcome us with open arms. Right now, God's grace is sufficient. And there's still time. There's still time for you to gather in His presence. And there's still time for us to gather at His table. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4, He brings me to His banquet table and His banner over me is love. And so today, I invite you to join us at the table of the Lord. Uh, for those who are watching, I invite you to have your communion elements ready as we partake of the cup and of the bread together. The scripture is so clear to us, and as Jesus in John chapter 13 washed his disciples' feet and represented for us that cup that symbolizes servanthood. Notice in verse 10, and Jesus says, 
Uh, you are clean, but not all of you. And he knew the one who was betraying him, and for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. And so he washed their feet, and he took his garments off, and he reclined, John says in 13 verse 12, he reclined again at the table with them. And I tell you today, as we partake of this meal, it is a symbol that Jesus has come to offer us cleansing. And, and what he says in verse 10 about being completely clean, about being completely whole, there's so many implications there about having your sins forgiven, about having the slate white cleaned, about allowing the blood of Christ to cleanse you, every aspect to cleanse you from sin and to make you whole again. That is why we celebrate the Lord's table today, and I'm so glad that we can celebrate this meal together as the Lord symbolized for us in the cup and with the bread, uh, the sacrifice that He would make for you and for me. And so as we pray together in just a moment, I invite you, we will start uh, from this side and we will invite you to come uh, practicing social distance measures. So please come one at a time, trying to leave about six feet between you and the person ahead of you. And as we take a moment to pray together, I invite you to come. If you are unable to come, please feel free to stay seated and we'll have one where he can serve you after everyone who can has come. And I invite you to bow with me now in prayer as we take a moment to prepare our hearts for this Lord's Supper together. Father, we are grateful for this table you set before us. We're grateful for this beautiful picture portrayed in John's Gospel. A picture of the disciples reclining there at the table with you. And Lord Jesus, I thank you for your act of servanthood. Um, Philippians 2 tells us that you came in the, that you took on the form of a servant. That you came in the form of a servant. That you took on human flesh and uh, yet we know there was no sin within you, and yet, Lord, as you took the form of a servant, and as we see in John 13, you washed the feet of the disciples, as we see in Psalm 23, you prepared the table, Lord, for us, even in the presence of our enemies. Lord, we see a great example, a great illustration of your servanthood, and taking that and going through horrific trials, and we see an image of your suffering. Pray the Garden of Gethsemane, if it be your will, Father, remove this cup from me. And yet, Lord Jesus, we see that you went to the cross and you bore the full cup of suffering for our sins, taking upon the very wrath of God on yourself for us to die in our place. Lord, yet as we come to this table of grace and mercy today, we come knowing that you left for us a seat at the table. So Lord, today we partake at the table, remembering the body and the blood of the Lord that was shed for us. Lord, knowing that it is your blood that has the power to make us clean, to make us whole again. Others, we partake of this meal today. Would you bless the partaking of these elements? Would you forgive us for our sins and wrongdoings? Would you draw us near to you today as we partake of the Lord's Supper together? We do so and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to come to the table uh, one at a time from this side. We'll just make your way back to your seat.
one that uh, did not receive the needs of us to bring one to you. So Jesus, with his disciples, he broke the bread and gave thanks and said, Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And then taking the cup, um, the plastic lid will lift up, hopefully easy for you, and be very careful not to spill it if you would please. Unwrap the cup. Does anybody need any assistance? All right. Okay. Yeah. So could you help Nick right here halfway down? Jesus took the cup and he said, take and drink and do this in remembrance of me. Would you bow with me as we pray? Father, we are so grateful for this day. Lord, we are so grateful for the body of Christ that was broken blood of Christ that was shed for us. Lord, we experience an extra measure of your grace today by coming to your table. For those who are able to partake of this at home with us, would you bless their time of communion together there with us virtually. And Father, as we prepare to leave this place in just a few moments, would you bring people into our lives who, who we can minister to, Lord. Help us to seek out those who need an extra measure of your grace this week. Lord, time is skinny short. And Father, I pray that you use this church and us as your body believers to share the love of Christ with those we come in contact with this week. Thank you for the cup. Thank you for the bread that we shared together and that we broke it together. Thank you for the table of the Lord that has been prepared before us. Thank you for our cup that runs over because of your goodness. Father, would you bless our lives this week. And we're grateful to have been in your presence and in your house together. And we ask in Jesus' name that everybody said, Amen. Well, I'm going to ask you to read today if you'll take your disposable cups and there's a trash can at the back. If you please take your disposal cup and drop that in the trash can as you leave. I'm so grateful we've had this time together as the church of the Lord Jesus. And I thank you for being with us here, both in person and those that are watching with us online. 
As we have a time of benediction today, I'm going to invite you to stand with me for just a moment and uh, let me offer a benediction as we prepare to leave this place. And uh, I pray God's blessing over our lives this week as we depart, knowing that He is present with us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and give you peace. And all of God's people said together, Amen. Thank you for being here today and worshiping.